I did go to the theater and see Furiosa, a Mad Ooh. Max saga. A Mad Max saga. All right. Okay. What are you talking about? A different page. That's totally like teenager irritating page, right? No. <laughs> um, it is. It's very interesting uh, what you'll see. I, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but the movie does really kind of try to fill in uh, a whole story as opposed to kind of just an episodic like, well, this is what's happening for this week, month, day. I mean, we start with Furiosa as a small child and oh. we go to her as, you know, a kind of a young adult. Oh. Uh, so we don't get all the way because this is Furiosa from Fury Road, Charlize Theron, same character. So don't get all the way there. Though then at the end credits, they're like, let me just connect all those dots for you. This is how this all works. This is mm. These are the same characters. Let's, we're just going to show you. We're going to remind you of everything that happened in Fury Road so that you totally know what happened at the end give you all the connective at the end yeah so sorry to ruin that for everybody but uh yes it's really it's interesting because when you think back about the other ones and i'm not exactly a mad max expert but uh you know this feels a little different in that it really like oh we're gonna show a vast part of time and really connect all these dots hmm so it's fun, you know, it's George Miller, you know, the king of Mad Max, and other things, Babe, and, you know, Happy Feet, and Lorenzo's Oil. Which, which is, is hilarious. Hard the, to remember. It's the Babe one that really gets me. Yeah, well, look, he didn't direct the first Babe. He wrote it, or, you know, co-wrote it, or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at it. He did direct the second one, you know, Pig in the City. But, um, so, you know, it's it's interesting, because, you know, uh, I mean, the people in it are very fun. You know, you have those... You have kind of three stars, and they're all very good. You know, the Mad Max world is insane. So it's, as it always is, totally insane. And it's played, the lead is now played by... Who? Charlize Theron's character, so Furiosa. Yeah. So yeah, Anya Taylor-Joy, or Ooh. however you correctly pronounce that. And yeah, they even did some, you know, as a small child, it's not her. But apparently they did some AI melding of the faces. Uh, I, I don't have all the information about that, but I saw a headline oh, about it. Interesting. Yeah. And then we've got Chris Hemsworth, not an AI nose, but with an additional nose. Yeah, I object I, to trying to you make know how Chris I feel about him. Like, don't mess with him. I know he has like fake teeth and like it a was, fake nose. It's no fine. Thanks. You totally forget about it. Uh, it doesn't mm. matter All who right. he cares. Okay. And I also thought, uh, you know, there's this guy, Tom Burke, who comes in. And let's say you're not an expert on uh, the Mad Max world. You might think like, oh, well, he's Mad Max, even though he's called something else. No, he isn't. But he's doing kind of a similar thing in his own different way. But he's definitely not Max. So, I just know those movies, because having watched the original and knew I was completely, I don't want to say disobedient, but like that was not a movie I was allowed to watch. Oh, no. You know, no, starring no, no. the Mel Gibson as the Mad Max character. You know, it's apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic world, and it's just so miserable seeming. And why? Because they're dirty. All of it. And just, you know, why Mel Gibson basically turns into Mad Max is so awful, the beginning sequence of that movie, that you just kind of, I don't know, like, my husband loves them, George Miller, because they are just a feast for the eyes. Mm -hmm. And the stunts, and he really doesn't try to rely on tons of uh, CGI. I think it's might there. Have had, might have be slightly too much CGI in this one. Okay. There's still a ton of real stuff. A practical effects. Yeah. But it is just you watch, and you're just like, oh, God, forget it. Forget it. I, I could not. It's funny because there are so many There's different... so much sun and dust and dirt. I mean, oh, not enough sunscreen. Gap. We'd be oh, in real trouble. Oh, my God, I'd be fried to a crisp. <laughs> Yeah. You know, as always, you see a couple different little, you know, slices of life in there, and some of them are worse. So, worse than what yeah. we see? Well, I mean, uh, every movie has some really terrible, you know, communities. So I'm sure, I'm not saying that this one I'm thinking of in this one is don't worse. It, than, oh, I'm just God, saying don't. there is one that's worse than normal. That you're like, oh, well, maybe frying on, on the desert sand isn't as bad as that. That seems Ooh, worse. Okay. All right. All right. I, I'm just saying, I don't know. It's up to you. It's your choice. I probably will inevitably watch it because my husband will watch it. <laughs> I have a question for everyone in the room. Mm. Uh, between all of the Mad Maxes, uh, isn't the first one like it's like Road Warrior is the original, mm -hmm. then Mad Max, and then the only one I ever think of, which is Mad Max and Thunderdome. Damn, like, Tina Turner. That's it. I don't know what the other ones are. I don't care about those ones. I want just the desert fighting for over gas with In weird the steel stuff. Steel cage. That's it. That's all I want. 
Tina Turner was so incredible in that. But it doesn't feel like the first two are really that very, they're not really like the post-apocalyptic desert chase each other around all the desert blowing yeah, up stuff. Yeah, it like kind of is, yeah. It feels like he's in a they cop, a much a cop bigger, and they drive regular cars on the road. Yes, because they had to modify what was there. You keep getting bigger and bigger budgets. By the time we hit Tina Turner, yeah. and we're in the 90s, it's like, it was like, Lobster was probably on the catering truck. I right. mean, very different. You're slightly off because I think what Ed is trying I'm to say accurate. Okay. Uh, there are only five movies, so you know you have those three, and then these two new ones. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, there's a comic book which is informing some of this and other confusing things, which we won't get to because apparently the timeline is actually very confusing. Uh, but moving on from that, those first three in the first one, and I think not as much the second one. So Mad Max, Mad Max Two in the U.S. Road Warrior. So confusing, but right. anyway, in those first one especially, the real world is still kind of going on. That's um, what I'm saying. So that's what I really? don't. I don't want. I don't want those. I just want the desert problem. I know. Movie. I like, Liz doesn't get. I, it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so any, it, who cares? Uh, that's a, You think the Tina Turner one was more. No, that's part of one of the giant Mad Max one that you only think oh of God. about in the desert with the little kid that's living in the, the like the tunnel village or whatever that right. is. Yeah, exactly. No, that I just want that one, and that's what the new one is. So, are. Ed, why don't you do one of yours? Watch all five in order and for get the, back for to the sixth one. I will. No, God help me. Ooh, okay, all supposedly right. Supposedly there might be a sixth one someday. Yes, they got they it. Figure it out. Budget. It's now Waterworld. No! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I mean, that's costume wise, it's yeah. not far off. We well, go from desert total, to water world. They really like browns, sand colors. Yeah, one of the saddest things, because, you know, I'm not, I don't have Fury Road memorized. You know, a lot of people really like this last one that came out right before this, the fourth one with Charlize Theron and Tom Hardy. And you know that that character is like trying to get back to where she came from. And you kind of like, okay, I guess you've been gone your whole life. I don't know what the deal is. You, You know, they don't explain everything. They give you some bits and pieces. But in this one, it's like, oh, as a child. And then to see kind of the in-between part is like, ooh, this is uh, not what I would have wanted for you. But on the other hand, it does really kind of bridge the gap. They're like, oh, how can we set up Fury Road perfectly? This would be the way to do that. So in that way, it makes sense, if, if not happy. Well, yeah, it does definitely feel like her character in Fury Road went through some bad, bad lead up time. Mm. I mean, you don't lose your hand for nothing. And your hair. Yeah. And some bad stuff was happening in that community. I hate to think about the 10 or 15 years intervening that we're covering in this new movie. Yeah, the amount of years is is all very questionable. Um, But yeah, what you're saying, it's funny, having seen this one now, it's like, oh, yeah, hmm, you're but you are misled. Okay, don't. All right. Don't spoil it anymore. I didn't. (laughs) 